welcome back. Defender and Discovery owners, OK, we're carrying on with rebuilding the diff and we're using an Ashcroft's HD cross pin for the centre diff. This is supposed to be stronger than these cross pins which Land Rover supply. They break at the wrong times, so we're going to make it a little bit stronger. We're also replacing the centre diff gearings. All right, you've got the planetary and uh, sun gears here. And this one's RTC uh, 4490 from Ashcrofts. And unfortunately, it's been superseded. And from Paddock, it's STC 2940, which you can see here. It's called the Trans Gear Set. In an overall kit, you will get some domed washers, like so. And uh, even if the ones you take out your differential unit aren't worn, change them anyway. You can see this saves the wear on the diff carrier. If the components have actually exploded in your diff carrier, then you might consider using another one. Right, okay, so we have our gears here and here. Uh, basically, what we need to do is use these thrust washers, which fit in here and on the other side there. They come in the Ashcroft's overhaul kit, and some kits, they don't actually appear in them. But these are standard size for fitment, okay? They fit in like so. Always replace them when you're doing a rebuild. And the rebuild kit, as you can remember, is the master rebuild kit from Ashcroft Transmissions. Right, so also, you remember we had play on the high selection gear there. And this was due to a worn bush. You can see the wear on the inside of the bushing and also on the outside. Now, we did a little bit of a search, IEE 100050, and it came up with the right parts from a paddock, which the bush is very inexpensive, although it is a special order. Right, so here's said bush. It's actually fitted on the wrong way around at the moment just to see if it fits well, and it does. It's actually taken the slack up completely on the diff carrier itself, and we'll check it against the gearing or the inside of the gear here, and that's a nice fit as well. Okay, not tight and not loose, so we're happy with this. We can keep our gear and our diff carrier and not worry about it being too sloppy. Just to show you here with the uh, component assembled, Nice and smooth and next to no play whatsoever, so that's good. Always keep bushings like this for your press, just in case you need them for pushing in or something. Okay, so assembly is kids play. Basically, you have a cross pin like so. Careful because they do actually, once it's in place, you probably need a screwdriver to prise it back out again. Right, so we'll assemble our gears into place like so. These little planetary gears and this actual shape that you see here that Ashcrofts have designed, you'll actually find this in heavy goods vehicles rear diffs. Surprisingly to say, if anybody is in the trade, you'll know. If not, look out for it because this is a stronger design. So seeing this on Ashcroft's website, I thought, yeah, I'll go for this because it's quite familiar to me. Right, so we'll fit our components together with the domed washers in place. You can oil them as you assemble them, but you can also oil them when it's in place, okay? Now, I've got it like this. This is how it's supposed to fit, okay? So you have your planetary gears. You have a cutout there for oil feed. You can see that, and you can see how sloppy, actually, these new components are on the cross shaft, these are okay, so it's not a problem. Right then, so what I'm gonna do is put the sun gear and the thrust washer in, but I'm also now gonna to start to oil the components. Not over drench them, but enough oil to make sure that they're not gonna seize up on a first start up. Just remember, we've got to get the oil around the gearbox, first of all. Okay, everything on this uh, gearbox is a splash fed. Okay, so I'll drop some oil on there. If you see the drillings there, that is where the oil feeds the components when the gearbox is running. Right, so I'll put this into place now, make sure she turns okay. And then I'll drop some oil in between the gaps, make sure she's all right. 
Okay, lubrication obviously is always a good point, but you don't need to over lubricate something when you're assembling it. Right, so there we go. That's the oil, oil and oil. This is EP90 that I'm using to lubricate. Work the oil in a little bit and we're fine. Okay, to, so this top sun gear here fits like so and we have no rough movement whatsoever so this is a good sign. If the gears were badly made you'd feel it as you were turning them. Right, so the next thrust washer is oiled and we can then fit the top part of the diff carrier into place. Now remember we had markers here and they match up because these components are made as pairs okay so you want the X's all together you can see that this is vitally important it will not fit any other way the threads on the bolts are lightly oiled and not thread locked these will be torqued down to 60 newton meters okay I'm just checking in there to make sure the gearing still works and then we'll screw them down there is a sequence for doing these bolts, which is doing them opposites or 60 degrees to each other. I'd advise that you do these in stages, maybe two stages, and then torque the bolts down. Okay, once you've done that, then put it in a uh, vise with soft jaws. You can see I've not nipped it up very tight, and I'm doing it up to 60 newton meters. I'm trying not to have the components scored up at all. But once it's been talked up, there's not a problem, okay? That is now ready to check to make sure that the differential unit on the inside moves freely and smooth. There is a Land Rover sequence to do this. If you want to look in the workshop manual, the quick way of doing it is just make sure it's not too tight, okay? So you can turn it lightly with your fingers. If you had to use your wrists to turn it, it is too tight and you'll need different thrusters in there. Okay, so next thing to do is to assemble the gears onto the carrier, okay? Now I'm oiling the shoulders and the running faces. So you can see here a light bit of lubrication. Lubrication never hurt anyone whatsoever. You can uh, confirm that with your wife. Right, okay, so first of all we have the low gear into place. Okay, this won't be used with me that often. And then the uh, dog selector hub, okay. If you remember how I was going to put this together... The warm part is going towards the low gear selection. I want to keep this uh, running better in high selection. Right, so I have my bush. That's been oiled nicely. Okay, that's all the contact faces are oiled. Okay, you see that? And then what happens is that the larger part of the bush, or the flange part of the bush, goes towards the top. That's where the bearing will push onto. Okay, to hold it all into place. All right, so this should work quite nicely. Okay, if you're anything like me, you might well be forgetful. So what I do is leave the bearing races in the case until I'm ready to recover them. And then I can identify them and fit the right bearings in the right places because the two bearings on this diff carrier and gear carrier are different sizes so I'll take the one out of the casing which will be to the rear or the rear housing I've got that one out apologies for the uh, sound effects there right I'll just keep that so I know which side it goes on to and get this casing out of the way for now and then the front housing well, actually, you need to strip this down to be able to set this up, okay? Now, the bearing race is in there. And I actually left the top bearing in, which I took out later. But basically, what you're doing is knocking the bearing race out. And there is also a spacer in here as well. The shim is vitally important for setting up uh, the bearing preload. Okay, so the housing here, you can see... And then we have the bearing race and the shim. Make sure the shim is not burred. And the bearing, we can get the numbers off to make sure we match the bearings correctly. Okay. 
So what we have here is a Y23011KH, which is a Timkin bearing. And the Timkin bearing, I think this is, or SKF, I'm not sure. Outer race is Y32011X. Okay, so they're the same size bearing. So this one fits on the uh, front housing like so. And the bearing itself will be fitted to the differential carrier. Just a word of warning, always keep your bearings in packets when you're not using them. Do not put them on the bench, however tempting it is, until, well, just don't. Just put them in packets and keep them clean as possible. Okay, so the other bearing, which is a Timking as well. Uh, this number here is different. This is something like JLM104910. Okay, if you can see that on the screen. This is for the rear part of the differential carrier and in the rear part of the casing. All right, so we know which bearings are which now. So we're happy with that. Okay, the rear part is the one that has the screw thread on it, like so. Okay, to fit the bearing, you need a piece of tubing, like so. This one just fits, and you're driving the inner part of the bearing race. Do not hit the cage at all, otherwise that will distort. And like Land Rover recommend, just drive it into place. Okay, so the bearing is fitted on the rear part. And then you have your nut here. Okay, that's actually the wrong way around. We're going to use a new one, if I can find it. That also comes in the kit, you can see there, always fit new because these are staked as well. Right, this has a thread lock compound on it and make sure you get it round the right way because the staked part is the top part. Okay, so wind it on by hand first to make sure your threads are okay. And remember our special socket that we made out of a paddock's hub. Um, socket well we're going to use that now because this is where it comes in really handy I'd advise doing this rather than a chisel the torque setting here is 72 Newton meters okay so once you've done that you can click it up okay and have I got that yep click click you can see that rather than hear it and then we're ready to put the other bearing into place Make sure that you haven't damaged the uh, bearing cage. The bearing runs freely and there's nothing trapping anything. Obviously it should be okay. And the gearing itself, they should turn fine. No problem, okay. Do not stake this nut up at this point. Because we fit new parts, we're gonna check the clearance, okay. Torrance is between 0 0.05 and 0 0.15 of a millimeter, okay. Now, as it states in Land Rover, they um, show you to check this after you've assembled it. However, I would advise to do it before, like I said when uh, I showed you stripping out, and after as well. I'm just making sure that there is enough clearance, and this is on the perfect tolerance of 0.05 millimeter. okay? So, all right there. We don't really need to check the gap here because we've changed nothing at all, but it is about the same. If the tolerance is out, you really need to rectify it first before you go ahead and stake this nut. Okay, now we've staked the nut, we're saying that this component is okay. Now I'm having to hold it under my armpit because it keeps leaping out of the vise. It's not held in there very tight, but once it's staked, that part is finished. Right, so the bearing on the other end, obviously easy to fit. And I'm using the same tube arrangement just to knock it into place. You'll also notice I'm using a soft headed hammer. This doesn't give a shock, it just gives a nice push. Right, so bearings on and in place. Now this part is assembled. Make sure that it is home firm and smooth. Okay, just one more little tap, just to make sure. Happy as a sandboy, and we can then carry on with the bearing races.